good afternoon and welcome again to the second class on a series of lectures titled uh, heat transfer in the last class uh, we studied about in brief the process of heat conduction and the process of heat convection then in this class we will study about the radiation mode of heat transfer then we will study uh, about boundary conditions their need and identifying the boundary conditions for a actual heat transfer problem so first we will solve a problem on convective heat transfer so here in this problem uh, it is given that water at 27 degree heated in a steel container using an induction heater so let's say you consider a induction heater and above this induction heater you place a, a container so where water is at 27 degree is inside this container and, uh, and this induction heater can produce heat flux in the range of 100 to 1000 watt per meter square that means this induction heater can give minimum heat flux of 100 watt per meter square and it can give maximum heat flux of 1000 watt per meter square so if the convective heat transfer coefficient is 25 watt per meter square kelvin that is h value is known to us for the water side here find the minimum and maximum surface temperature of the steel plane that can be achieved so here uh, we will first note down the given information so in this case it is heat transfer from the outer surface of outer uh, surface of a solid domain to the ambient uh, water which is at 27 degree centigrade so t infinity is given to be 27 degree centigrade and here heat flux you will consider the minimum value that you get from this induction heater to be 100 watt per meter square and the heat transfer coefficient h is given to be uh, here it should be 25 watt per meter square kelvin so this should be 25 so first we will write down the basic equation for convective heat transfer that is q equals to h into a into t s minus t infinity so here h is your convective heat transfer coefficient a is the surface area from which heat transfer takes place by means of convection t s is the surface temperature of the solid and t infinity is the temperature of the ambient fluid so from this expression we can find out heat transfer per unit area that is heat flux so that will become h into delta t that is t s minus t infinity so here in this expression uh, this flux is known to us that is given to be 100 watt per meter square and this heat transfer coefficient h is given to be 25 watt per meter square kelvin and here our objective is to find out the values of the surface temperature ts whereas this uh, temperature of this ambient water is given to be 27 degree centigrade so in kelvin it becomes 300 so from this expression you can find out the value of a surface temperature T s which comes out to be equals to 304 Kelvin and if you convert them into degree centigrade this you will get 31 degree centigrade. Then the second part of this question says that for what value of this convective transfer coefficient corresponding to maximum heat flux produced by this induction heater the surface temperature of the pan can reach 107 degree centigrade. So before you go to the second part here in this case we will again solve this problem by considering this heat flux to be equal to 1000 watt per meter square so here we obtain the surface temperature to be 31 degree centigrade corresponding to the heat flux of minimum value of 100 degree centigrade sorry 100 watt per meter square that means uh, this surface temperature we obtain 31 is the minimum surface temperature of the pan that we will obtain similarly when you use for this 1000 degree 1000 watt per meter square so we will recalculate again just to replace this 100 by 1000 here in this expression and on recalculating you will obtain the value of surface temperature of this pan which comes out to be 340 Kelvin that means 67 degree centigrade. So this will be the maximum surface temperature of the steel pan that you can obtain using this induction heater for the conditions given here in this problem. Next we will go for the second part where it says that a uh, corresponding to this maximum heat flux of 1000 watt you have to find out the convective heat transfer coefficient h if the surface temperature of the pan reaches to a temperature of 107 degree centigrade that means here in this expression we will take uh, q double prime is equals to 1000 and this h is not known to us we have to find out ts is given to be 107 degree centigrade 
so in kelvin it becomes 380 and ts is given to be 27 degree centigrade sorry t infinity given to be 27 degree centigrade so which becomes in kelvin 300 so from this expression we can obtain the convective transfer coefficient h so on calculation you obtain this comes out to be 12.5 watt per meter square kelvin that means the heat transfer coefficient corresponding to maximum heat flux when the surface temperature is 107 degree centigrade comes out to be 12.5 watt per meter square kelvin so next we will go for solving another simple problem based on this concept of convective heat transfer so here in this case it is given that hot water at 87 degree centigrade is flowing over a flat plate which is maintained at 27 degree centigrade so here in this diagram this represents the flat plate over which uh, this hot fluid uh, hot water at 87 degree is flowing here the convective heat transfer coefficient is given to be 50 watt per meter square kelvin that is h is known to us uh, it have been asked to find the heat transfer rate into the plate per unit area that means we have to find out the heat flux q double prime so here first you will note down the given information so the surface temperature is given to be uh, 27 degree centigrade and this ambient temperature is given to be 87 degree centigrade and the convective transfer coefficient h is given to be 50 watt per meter square kelvin and uh, let's say the area is no given uh, it to be 1 meter square that is here it you have been asked to find out your power unit area so using the basic expression for convective heat transfer coefficient h uh, here this q equals to h into a into delta t where delta t is nothing but difference in the temperature of this uh, surface of the solid wall and this ambient fluid temperature so in this expression you can find out the uh, values of uh, q by considering this a equals to 1 meter square because you have been asked to find out heat transfer rate into the plate per unit area so you get here in this case h is equals to 50 and then this uh, ts is given to be equals to 27 degree so it becomes 300 and this uh, t uh, f is t infinity is given to be 87 degree centigrade which in kelvin becomes 360 so from this expression you find out the values of q comes out to be minus 3000 watt so negative sign here indicates that uh, the heat transfer is uh, from the fluid into the uh, solid plate because here in this case the flu uh, the water is at a higher temperature which is at 87 degree centigrade compared to the plate solid plate which is at a temperature of 27 degree centigrade so this negative sign shows the downward uh, uh, which is the direction of the flow of this heat as shown here in this diagram then heat transfer rate into this plate per unit area uh, that you can say without uh, considering this sign that uh, you can write down to be equals to 3000 watt so uh, from this situation we can say that always it is not uh, mandatory that uh, there will be heat transfer from the solid surface to the fluid only there may be some situation where there will be transfer of heat from the hot fluid to the cold solid surface because the fluid temperature is higher compared to the temperature of this solid surface so uh, considering this scenario uh, we can rewrite that the convective heat transfer from a hot solid surface to the cold fluid and uh, that you can write down q equals to h into a into ts minus t infinity here this surface temperature ts is greater than the ambient fluid temperature t infinity for the second case h is the case in this problem number 3 where the ambient fluid temperature is greater than the temperature of this uh, surface so in such case the convective heat transfer from hot fluid to the cold solid surface this q will be equals to h into a into here this time delta t becomes your temperature of this fluid t infinity minus temperature of the solid surface t s so now here uh, we will uh, 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 not study further about this convective heat transfer mode uh, mode next we will go for the third basic mode of heat transfer that is your radiation heat transfer radiation is nothing but energy emitted by matter which is at a finite temperature so uh, for example if you consider burning of a coal if you stand near this burning of a coal you will feel the hotness uh, that you get by a means of radiation that comes from this one and it strikes to the 
human body. So, any surface which is a, at a temperature uh, above absolute 0 emits energy and this uh, emission of energy takes place either in the form of electromagnetic waves or it can take place as the photons and this uh, emission that comes uh, in all possible directions and all wavelengths starting from lambda equals to 0 to lambda equals to infinity where this lambda is the wavelength of this emission of radiation that comes from a particular surface. So, this uh, emission of radiation from a surface uh, can take plus as per the as per the Maxwell's electromagnetic theory which uh, in which the emission of radiation is considered as the electromagnetic waves whereas, the Max Planck's concept which is also known as the theory of quantum treats this radiation as the photon or the quanta of energy which comes out from any surface which is at a temperature above the absolute 0 temperature. So, this emission of this radiation can occur from a solid surface as well as it can occur from a so fluid surface that which includes liquid and gases. Unlike the conduction mode of heat transfer and convection mode of heat transfer where a medium is required for the propagation of this uh, energy, this uh, radiation mode of heat transfer does not require any medium for the propagation of the energy. For example, conduction takes place either in the solids or near boundary inside the fluids. Then this convection takes place inside the fluids, whereas the radiation can take place uh, within the medium or it can take place in the absence of any medium also. The best example for this is that uh, getting uh, the sun light uh, on the surface of the earth. So, here you can see uh, in between the sun and the surface of the earth, uh, the, the large number uh, for a appreciable length uh, distance, it is absolute vacuum only near to the surface of this earth, uh, there is a presence of air medium. So, we obtain the energy from the surface of the sun to the surface of the earth by means of radiation only which is travelling in absolute vacuum. In fact, radiation of heat transfer is most efficient in the absence of any medium or you can say there will not be any attenuation in the uh, radiation intensity when there is no medium is present. Whenever some medium is present, there are chances that there will be some attenuation of this thermal radiation. So, this emission or this absorption of radiation energy by a particular body is a bulk process which consists of the radiation which originating from the interior of the body gets transmitted to the uh, surface and from the surface it gets emitted. Then the radiation incident on the surface of a body which penetrates uh, to the depth of the medium where it gets attenuated. For example, you consider standing near a, a fire, so you will feel the hotness because here in this case uh, there will be a generation of heat uh, uh, from this uh, uh, wood and here this heat will be radiated in all directions and when you are standing near this fire you will feel this uh, thermal energy that will strike to your body by means of radiation. As told earlier, any body or surface which is at a temperature above absolute 0, it will give some amount of radiation. Even surfaces which are at a relatively lower temperature will also give some amount of radiation. Though we will, we normally uh, do not feel the radiation coming from a cold surface compared to a hot surface because the net radiative heat exchange between a cold surface and hot surface will result that the radiation will go from a higher temperature surface towards a lower temperature surface. Though the lower temperature surface also gives some amount of radiation that strikes to a higher temperature surface also. Now, we will consider a case of uh, burning of a wood uh, for uh, getting some fire. So, here in this case we will see how the three modes of heat transfer uh, helps to propagate the energy from the source. For example, if you stand near this uh, burning of this wood, you will feel the intensity of the heat which comes from this fire to your body by means of radiation which passes through the medium. Here in this case the medium will be presence of this air surrounding this fire. Then 
if you consider a solid uh, rod and you put the solid rod uh, into the fire, so one end of the solid rod will get heated and there will be conduction heat transfer through the solid rod and you will feel the, uh, the increase in the temperature at the other end of the solid rod after some time. So, there will be heat transfer by means of conduction through this rod. Then if you put your hand at the top of this fire, uh, in addition to this radiation you will also experience the heat transfer that is going by means of convection because the air present above this fire will get heated and uh, as soon as it gets heated its temperature will uh, increase and it will result in the decrease in the density of this air and because of this buoyancy force this uh, hot air will move vertically upward. So, in this process it will carry out the heat from the fire towards your hand. And this uh, figure shows the thermal image of a person uh, standing uh, with a, a gun here. So, you can see the different uh, zones of this picture are at a different colors. So, in fact, each uh, color value represents some temperature here in this diagram. So, at edge can be seen the background is almost at a single uniform color which indicates a approximately uniform temperature background. Then you can see for this uh, person, the head seems to be a brighter uh, compared to the gun and uh, this indicates that the head is at a higher temperature and this gun, it, uh, the surface of this gun uh, which will be a, at a lower temperature which will be uh, close to the temperature of the ambient. And here you can also observe the folds in this uh, uh, T-shirt where uh, this folds uh, are visible because of uh, the different orientation of the surface of this T-shirt which will give radiations in different directions. And the principles of working of this thermal imaging camera is that it captures radiation coming from the source and based on the magnitude of the radiation it gets from a particular point, the temperature of that point is decided. So, based on this value and this figure is reconstructed. So, this helps for many engineering application including border security and uh, for example, uh, thermal analysis of uh, systems where you find it to uh, enter inside and uh, if you use thermocouples then you will get uh, temperature at uh, different limited points only whereas, using a thermal imaging camera will give you temperature over a broad area. So, this information can be much more useful compared to the information temperature information you can obtain for a particular point or few points only with the help of thermocouples. So, consider a solid surface to which some uh, energy by radiation is striking here. So, you say it to be the incident energy that falls on this upper surface. So, out of this totally incident energy that falls on this upper surface, some amount of energy gets reflected to the ambient then some energy gets absorbed inside this uh, solid medium and the remaining amount gets transmitted uh, across this uh, solid. Uh, so, here in this case you will see uh, this metals are considered to be opaque to the thermal radiation because when this thermal radiation falls on a metal surface, it gets attenuated within few angstroms from the upper surface. So, hardly there will be any transmitted energy in case of a metal uh, surface. So, that is why you consider this metals to be opaque to the thermal radiation. Whereas, this water and glass are considered to be semi transparent to the solar radiation, because when the solar radiation incidents on a water body, it gradually attenuated as the beam penetrates into the depth of this water. Similarly, when the solar radiation incidents on a glass sheet, it partially absorbed inside this glass, uh, glass material and partially gets reflected from the upper surface and the third portion it gets transmitted across this glass plate. So, uh, this water and glass are considered to be semi, semi transparent to this solar radiation. So, next is the, we will study about the Stephen Boltzmann's law which gives an uh, as an idea about the amount of energy uh, that can uh, uh, 
emit from a particular surface which is at a certain temperature. For example, you consider a solid medium uh, whose surface is at a certain temperature, let us say T s. So, there will be radiations uh, coming out of the surface in all possible directions. So, you can say energy radiated into all directions and over all wavelengths starting from wavelength lambda equals to 0 to lambda equals to infinity. So, this Stephen Boltzmann law says that the maximum radiation flux that is emitted from a surface which is at a particular temperature let us say T s is equals to sigma into T s to the power 4. That means, this radiation flux is directly proportional to the fourth power of the surface temperature and here the sigma is your constant of proportionality is known as the Stephen Boltzmann constant whose value is equals to 5.67 into 10 to the power minus 8 watt per meter square Kelvin to the power 4. So, using this simple expression we can find out radiation flux coming out of a particular surface at a certain fixed temperature of T s. So, the black body emissive powers represented as E b can be written to be equal to sigma into T s to the power 4. So, here we consider that uh, this surface which is at a temperature of T s is a ideal surface which acts as the black body from which you will get this much of the energy per unit area. The radiation flux that is emitted from an actual body or a real body which is an absolute temperature T will also will be always less than that of the emissive power that you get from a black body. So, black body is considered to be ideal surface whereas, this real body is considered to be the actual surface where the emission you obtain from a real body will be less than uh, that of a black body. So, if you represent this radiation flux coming from a real body to be equal to Q that can be represented as epsilon times the MEC power E b. So, E b expression is sigma into T s to the power 4. So, this now Q becomes epsilon into E b which becomes sigma into epsilon into T s to the power 4. Here this epsilon is called the emissivity whose value lies in the range of 0 to 1. For all real bodies the values of emissivity will be always less than 1. So, in such case the radiation flux emitted by a real body will be always less than that of a black body when the both real body and the black body are having same surface temperature. So, next we will solve one uh, simple problem based on the theory of uh, this radiation heat transfer. So, here in this problem it is given that there is a, a pipeline through which steam at 200 degree centigrade is flowing. The diameter of this pipe is given to be 10 centimeter. Uh, uh, so, there is the surrounding ambient is at a temperature of 27 degree centigrade. It has been asked to find for unit length of the tube the total energy emitted by radiation from this outer surface to the ambient which is at a temperature of 27 degree centigrade and here it had been asked to neglect the temperature gradient inside this tube wall. So, the steam inside this tube is at a temperature of 200 degree centigrade that means, the inner surface which will have at a temperature of 200 degree centigrade which is given to us. So, you can write down the given information. So, here uh, you have been asked to neglect the temperature gradient inside this tube wall. So, that is why the outer uh, surface of this uh, tube will also be at the same temperature as that of the inner surface of the tube which is at a temperature of 200 degree centigrade. So, T s outer surface temperature will be 200 degree centigrade, ambient temperature is given to be 27 degree centigrade that is T infinity is 27 degree centigrade and the diameter D is given to be 10 centimeter or it can be written to be 0 0.1 meter. So, here we, we have to find out the heat uh, a total energy emitted by radiation from the outer surface of this tube. So, let we represent to be equals to Q 1. So, for which mathematical expression will be sigma into A into T s to the power 4. So, in this case sigma is equals to 5.67 into 10 to the power minus 8 which is a constant value and here the surface area from which 
a, a energy emission takes place. So, it is given to be to calculate power unit length. So, you consider 1 meter length. So, for which the surface area will be equals to 2 pi r into L or pi d into L. So, considering L is equals to 1 meter unit length. So, the total area you will get equals to pi into d. So, d is given to be 0 0.1 into T s to the power 4. So, T s surface temperature is given to be equals to 200 degrees centigrade. So, it will become 473 Kelvin. So, on calculation you will obtain this uh, total energy emitted by radiation from this outer surface of the, this body sorry this uh, tube comes out to be 891.94974 watt. Then the second part uh, of this question asks that what should be the temperature of the steam inside this circular tube if the energy emitted by radiation to the ambient need to be doubled. So, in the first case we get this energy emitted comes out to be 891.974 watt. So, now energy is doubled. So, Q 2 becomes your 2 into 891.974 watt. So, for this case you have to find out the surface temperature. So, this is equals to uh, comes out to be 1783.94 watt. So, this will be equals to sigma into A into T s to the power 4. So, the surface area A remains same as the earlier case. So, which we calculated to be equals to 0 0.1 pi and the sigma is a constant 5.67 into 10 to power minus 8. So, the only unknown remains here in this expression is T s. So, on solving this one, we will obtain the values of T s comes out to be equals to 562.49 Kelvin and on conversion uh, to degree centigrade this comes out to be 289.49 degree centigrade. That means, if we maintain the steam temperature inside this circular tube at a temperature of 289.49 degree centigrade, then we will be able to double the total energy emitted by the radiation from the outer surface compared to the case when the steam temperature inside this circular tube is at a temperature of 200 degree centigrade. So, next we will consider the conservation of energy because this is most important uh, in uh, studying the heat transfer. Earlier we studied about uh, the basic difference between heat transfer and thermodynamics. They are highly complementary to each other and the heat transfer can be viewed as an extension of the thermodynamics where in, where in thermodynamics we deal with the end, end states only that means equilibrium states and heat transfer deals with uh, uh, the system in between these two equilibrium states. So, we will consider the conservation of energy for a control volume. Let us say we consider an arbitrarily shaped control volume. So, for which you can represent the control surface as represented here in this diagram by this dotted uh, uh, edge of this control volume. So, here in this case you will see some amount of energy uh, that will enter into this control volume through this control surface let this energy be represented as E dot in. So, E dot in nothing but the thermal and mechanical energy that enters into this control volume through passing through this control surface. Then some amount of energy that will leave this control volume through this control surface we will represent this as E out. So, this will become E out here. So, this E dot out is nothing but the thermal and mechanical energy that leaves the control volume through the control surface. Then you will see there may be some amount of energy generated inside this uh, control volume. So, that will represent as E dot G. So, that is the energy generation which is nothing but creation of thermal energy within this the within the control volume because of conversion from one form to the other form. So, this can be conversion of chemical energy into thermal energy or electrical energy into thermal energy or it can be a because of spontaneous energy emission in case of a nuclear material. So, then we will represent uh, d by dt of E s t is nothing but the rate of change of energy stored within this control volume which we can represent as E dot s t. Then, uh, using this conservation of energy for a control volume when you go for this energy balance inside this control volume 
considering the control surface here, we will get energy that enters into this control volume through the control surface plus energy that is generated inside this control volume the minus energy that uh, leaves this control volume that is equal to uh, change in energy uh, that is stored inside this control volume. So, this is the expression based on a rate basis at any instant of time t. Similarly, you can find out similar expression for this conservation of energy for a control volume over a time interval delta t. So, for which you can read down E subscript i n that is energy that enters into the control volume plus E subscript g that is energy generated inside this control volume minus E subscript out that is energy leaves the control volume that is equal to delta E st that is change of uh, energy stored inside this control volume. So, here this first term this E, e subscript i n is nothing but this inflow of energy term and the second term E subscript g is nothing but the energy generation term. And here in this and the, and the third one that is your E subscript out is your outflow energy term. So, here in this case this inflow and the generation term uh, increases the energy content inside this control volume while this outflow term decreases the energy content inside this control volume. So, here in this case this inflow and outflow of this energy is a surface phenomena because they enter into the control volume through this control surface therefore, uh, they are proportional to the surface area. So, this inflow and outflow of energy depends on the surface area of this control volume. Next the energy generation is a volumetric phenomena where this en energy generation is proportional to the magnitude of this volume of this control volume that we consider for the purpose of analysis. Next the storage of this energy inside this control volume is again a volumetric phenomena which is proportional to this magnitude of this volume that means the bigger the volume the more is the energy stored in the control volume. So, next we will consider the surface energy balance. For example, we consider a heat transfer in a one dimensional uh, solid domain. Uh, Let us say we consider heat transfer in a slab of thickness L which extends from x is equal to 0 on the left face to x is equal to L on the right face. So, both there is a temperature difference between this left and this right face and we consider that uh, the left face is at a higher temperature compared to the right face that is why there will be heat transfer by means of conduction inside this solid. Then on the right hand side there is a presence of uh, a fluid which is relatively lower temperature than this right surface. So, there will be heat transfer from the surface to the ambient fluid by means of convection. Similarly, there will be heat transfer from this uh, outer surface to the ambient by means of radiation. So, in this case we uh, this if you consider the uh, right surface and you will go for the surface ba energy balance on this right for surface then applying this conservation of energy at this surface we can uh, uh, find out an expression, but it is important to note that this control surface it uh, does not include any mass or volume. So, it, it, uh, it cannot uh, so, it, it will not have any mass or any volume for this control surface. So, mathematically by applying this energy balance to this uh, surface we can write down E energy E dot in that is energy entering into the surface plus energy generated in the surface minus energy going out of the surface is equal to uh, change in the energy content in the surface. But here in this case since uh, this uh, surface cannot retain any mass or volume. So, no energy can be generated inside this uh, surface or no energy will also be stored inside this surface. So, the second term on the left hand side will be 0 and the term on the right hand side will also be 0. So, you have uh, two remaining terms that means E dot in minus E dot out equals to 0 or we can write down E dot in equals to E dot out. So, E dot in is your energy influx to the control surface and E dot out is your energy outflux from the 
control surface. So, here uh, it is to note that there may be energy generation inside this medium, but that is not going to affect uh, uh, the control surface. So, there will not be any energy generated inside the control surface. So, uh, this uh, expression we obtained here which is nothing but the surface energy balance equation is true both for a steady state as well as a unsteady state condition. So, here in this case for the present case if we consider this expression that is uh, energy influx is equal to energy outflux. So, as can be seen here in this diagram energy influx to this uh, control volume uh, control surface is by means of conduction inside the solid. So, we write down at per unit area uh, heat flux by means of conduction it is Q double prime conduction that is equals to energy uh, that is going out of this control surface. So, it is going by means of two modes one is by means of convection second one is my by means of radiation. So, the energy flux going by means of convection represented as q double prime convection and this energy uh, outflux going by means of radiation is represented as q double prime r a d radiation. So, here we can uh, rewrite here we can rewrite uh, the expressions for uh, energy flux uh, by conduction and energy flux by convection as well as energy flux by radiation. Then we can further simplify that becomes the a simplified form of the surface energy balance equation on the right surface for this present problem. So, now we will uh, go for solving a problem based on this concept. So, let us say you consider heat conduction in a one dimensional domain for which the thickness is given to be 0.25 meter and the two surfaces of this wall. Uh, whose thermal conductivity is given to be 0.5 watt per meter Kelvin are at a temperature of 260 degree centigrade and 60 degree centigrade respectively. So, we can consider the left face is at 260 and right face is at 60 degree which we can represent as T 1 and T 2. So, there will be heat transfer from the left face towards the right face by means of conduction whose direction is shown here inside this diagram and the surface which is at 60 degree centigrade that is right side surface is exposed to ambient at 27 degree centigrade. So, this side is you are having ambient fluid and heat transfer from this surface to the ambient fluid takes place by means of convection as well as radiation. So, you can consider this is your convective flux that is going out of the surface and this is the radiative flux that is going out of this surface. Considering the surface to be black body that means, the emissivity epsilon to be equals to 1 for the surface. We have been asked to find the convective heat transfer coefficient h under the steady state condition. So, here first you note down the given information T 1 temperature on the left face is given to be 260 degree centigrade. So, here you write down this to be 260 degree centigrade. Then temperature on the right face is given to be 60 degree centigrade. So, 60 ambient fluid temperature is given to be uh, 27 degree centigrade and this thermal conductivity uh, of the solid medium is given to be 0 0.5 watt per meter Kelvin. So, you rewrite this one here and this L is also given to you 0 0.25 here L is 0 0.25 you note down. Then you have been asked to find out the convective heat transfer coefficient h. So, here we will rewrite this surface energy balance equation that is heat coming to the surface by conduction uh, per, per unit area equals to heat going away from the surface by means of convection and radiation per unit area. So, their sum will be equals to the heat coming by conduction. So, now here we rewrite the expression for conduction heat flux that can be written as minus k into d t by d x. So, here d t will be equals to t 2 minus t 1 divided by thickness of this domain that is given to be equals to L. So, that is equal to on the right hand side you have convective heat flux Q double prime convection which will be mathematically H into T s minus T infinity where T s is your 
the surface temperature. But here in this case, the surface temperature is nothing but equals to T2. So, you can re, uh, note down T2 is equals to Tsc here in this expression and T infinity is the temperature of this ambient fluid which is at a temperature of 27 degree centigrade. Then the next one is your radiative heat flux that is Q double prime Rad uh, which we can rewrite sigma into Ts to the power 4 minus T infinity to the power 4. Here considering the surface to be black body the emissivity epsilon will be equals to 1 and here we consider sigma Ts to the power 4 is the radiative energy that leaves the surface that goes to the ambient and sigma T infinity to the power 4 is the radiative energy that leaves the ambient and that strikes to the surface. So, sigma into T s to the power 4 minus T infinity to the power 4 is the net radiative heat exchange between this right surface and the ambient fluid. So, now here in this expression all the values are known to us except the values of convective heat transfer coefficient h which we have to find out from this expression. So, here uh, replacing the uh, values given to us that is the convective uh, uh, thermal conductivity is given to be 0.5 and this T1, T2 are known their difference comes out to be 200. So, you will get here minus 200 because T2 is less than T1 and this thickness of this domain given to be 0.25 and here the difference between the surface and the ambient fluid temperature which is 60 and 27 which comes out to be 33 degree or 33 Kelvin. So, h into 33 you obtain for the first term on the right hand side plus sigma whose value is constant 5.67 into 10 to the power minus 8. Then inside bracket you have T s to the power 4. So, T s is given to be 27, uh, T s is given to be 60 degree centigrade. So, in Kelvin it becomes uh, uh, 333 to the power 4 minus m and fluid temperature 27 degree which in Kelvin becomes 300. So, minus 300 to the power 4. So, here in this expression you have only h unknown all other values are known. So, on solving this uh, equation uh, we will obtain the values of convective heat transfer coefficient h which comes out to be 4.91 watt per meter square Kelvin. So, then the second part of this question says that if the heat transfer by radiation is neglected then calculate the convective heat transfer coefficient. So, here you consider the situation here the amount of uh, heat flux that is leaving this right surface by means of radiation to the uh, ambient we are neglecting here. So, we will uh, omit this one here in this equation. So, by omitting this one we, we have heat flux to this uh, right surface by means of conduction only that is heat influx and heat outflux from this uh, surface is by means of convection only. So, here in this expression the second term the right hand side we will omit. So, what we will have is your uh, conductive heat flux will be equals to convective heat flux. So, we will have on left hand side minus k into T 2 minus T 1 by L that is equal to on the right hand side will have h into T s minus T infinity. So, now here in this expression we have only one unknown that is h remaining values are known to us that is k is given to be 0.5. T1 and T2 values are given. So, their difference comes out to be 200 and this uh, uh, domain width is given to be 0.25 meter that is equals to L. Then difference between the surface temperature and the ambient fluid temperature which is 60 minus 27 comes out to be 33 here. So, from this equation you can obtain the values of this convective transfer coefficient h which comes out to be 12 point uh, 12 watt per meter square Kelvin. So, here in this case it can be observed that when it was uh, heat transfer from this right phase to the ambient fluid by both convection and radiation the convective heat transfer coefficient uh, was having a, a smaller value of 4.91 whereas when we neglected the heat transfer by radiation the convective transfer coefficient h comes to be a higher value compared to this 4.91 which comes out to be 12.12 watt per meter square Kelvin. So, higher value comes in the second case because uh, this uh, uh, surface energy balance equation we are writing at the steady state under the steady state heat influx by conduction should be equal to heat outflux by radiation sorry by convection only. Earlier heat was going away from the surface both by convection and radiation that is why a lower uh, convective transfer coefficient was enough 
to have a, a steady state condition whereas in the second case we considered uh, we neglected the radiative heat transfer that is why uh, to compensate the uh, heat loss by radiation to be covered by the heat loss by means of convection we need to have a higher value of convective heat transfer coefficient such that it can compensate the neg uh, negligence of this uh, heat transfer from this uh, right surface by means of radiation. So, with this uh, today we studied about uh, heat transfer by radiation mode where we solved some problems and also we solved uh, uh, some problems on heat transfer by means of convection. Later on we studied about the energy balance concept and the need of energy uh, and the uh, use of this energy balance on the surface by considering our surface energy balance and we solved a problem. So, from in the next class we will study about uh, different boundary conditions and initial conditions their need identifying initial and boundary conditions from the governing differential equation and writing the boundary conditions and the initial condition of a given engineering problem involving heat transfer process. That is all for today. Thank you.